you. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I think we can start. Okay. So, uh, um, hello everyone. And uh, so today we, are, we have the honor to uh, invite Professor Chow to share her research on 3D display, which is going to be used for next generation like AI, uh, AI, AI experience. And uh, first, uh, I would like to thank everyone who contributes to the device who make it happen, especially Jin Ken, uh, who unfortunately uh, cannot be here today. Um, so to this event, uh, first I will do the opening and we'll start to introduce a little bit about our society in case uh, some, some of friends is, uh, is first being here and you do not know uh, what, uh, what the other events, uh, the other events of our society. And then uh, Xiao will introduce Professor Xiao and then Professor Xiao will have uh, her talk. And then we have a uh, 30 minutes uh, QA sections followed up. Uh, so first, uh, I want to introduce a little bit on our society. So uh, the Marty Society is a nonprofit organization uh, dedicated to interdisciplinary exchanges on research and also to promote young scholars. So we have like uh, several types of uh, events going on right now. And uh, the first one is uh, what we are doing today is the Marty's talk, which focuses more on academic research and uh, research topics. And we also have a uh, WBA talk, which is focused um, more on the topics beyond academia, such as in industry, like startup and some other interesting topics. And we also have TMS workshop, which is for skill set build up. And uh, we also have kind of special events, which is uh, the special issue of Matthias talk, which we usually uh, organize events based on our audience request. And usually we, for example, we invited uh, Professor Chen Li, uh, who is also like a kind of like a social celebrities who uh, popularizing science. So if you have more questions or you want to be one of our uh, speakers, you can check our website or send us emails. And you can also follow us, follow us on WeChat channel and also on Twitter. So now I will pass the floor to Xiao and for him to introduce Professor Xiao. All right, um, thank you, Jen, for the opening remarks. So good morning and good evening, everyone. Um, it is my great pleasure to introduce Professor Wen Chiao from Sutro University. Um, Professor, uh, Pro Professor Chiao received her bachelor's degree from Tianjin University and her master's degree in Georgia University. Then she started her PhD research on microfluidic devices with Professor uh, Yu Hua Lu at University of California, San Diego. Um, so after finishing her PhD work, uh, Professor Chow um, uh, leads the innovation in um, augmented reality, also known as AR. Um, to me, virtual reality and augmented reality were just, uh, uh, you know, a wild imagination from science uh, fiction, especially with the uh, current hype in the metaverse and the glasses free 3D displays that they invented uh, could really present colorful, vivid 3D images and videos and the quality is truly amazing. So is the AR technology already here? Um, let's figure it out along with uh, Professor Chow's presentation. So uh, Professor Chow, the floor is all yours. Um, Professor Chow, uh, we cannot hear you. Uh, Professor, oh, no, uh, can, can, I can't share my slides right now. You can, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. I think I should give you the, the co-host. Uh, can you share the slides right now? Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry for the inconvenience. Can you see my slides now? Uh, yeah, but this is not in a presentation mode. But yes, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm going to dis uh, disable my camera because there are some uh, videos and cartoons in my slides so that I can have enough bandwidth for the slides. Okay, no problem.
Okay, everyone. Um, my talk is Planar Optics Enables Next Generation 3D Display. Um, nowadays, we spend lots of time in front of a screen. 90% of the media interaction are now screen-based. And personally, I spend more than 10 hours in front of a screen every day uh, for lecture and also for my work. 3D display is already shown in all kinds of movies to express our ideal display format. So 3D display is the ideal display format, and it will redefine how we interact with information. There are lots of progressions during the uh, past decades. Uh, the screens moves from black and white to colorful and from bulky to a uh, uh, thin format. And the resolution, the brightness has already been improved a lot. And then the next generation 3D is 3D display. And 3D display will be the hardware of a meta universe. There are all kinds of display technologies can be used to achieve 3D display. For example, uh, in, 19, uh, in, in 2013, um, there is a paper published in Nature use periodic nano gratings. And they use this kind of uh, periodic nano gratings to create multiple views. It has a field of view of 90 degree and uh, it has a very thin format. And in 2018, uh, a volume 3D display is published. So they use uh, light to check a, a, a particle, a micro particle. The micro particle moves in the space and they use another uh, light to shine on the microsphere and the particles uh, illuminates and displays a 3D image. And uh, in 2020, uh, uh, another work published in NatureCom, they use a scanning directional backlight to enlarge the viewing angle of 3D display. There are all kinds of 3D displays, for example, holographic 3D display, uh, volume 3D display, and multi-view 3D display. Uh, I'm particularly interested in multi-view 3D display, mainly because it is the technology that can that is compatible with a flat panel and is compatible with the format of, of, of our pad or our electronic uh, devices so that it is the format that we can use in our daily life. And it will be the technology that will interact with us uh, and redefine the way we uh, interact with uh, information. In a multi-view 3D display, we use uh, multiple views to discretize a 3D uh, wavefront. And we use 2D perspective images to express the, um, the, wave inter uh, the, the wavefront information of discretized views. Then these discretized views is used to express the 3D wavefront. Uh, in multi-view 3D display, there are lots of techniques. Uh, besides the periodic nano gratings, there are uh, uh, other techniques. For example, uh, uh, parallax barrier and macro lens array. Uh, for example, this one is a, a, a product. It's already a product that we can purchase from the market. It's from Looking Glass. Um, and this is a uh, tool work published in uh, OE. Uh, with a uh, uh, lenticular lens array, uh, and it can achieve a large viewing angle. So there are uh, several ways to achieve multiple 3D display technologies. Uh, for example, the parallax barrier, they use the um, pinholes or the uh, gratings, and they bury, uh, they, they block other, uh, the, the the light from other directions. Um, and in a lenticular lens areas um, and in a macro lens areas, they can achieve a parallax uh, 
horizontal parallax or uh, full motion uh, parallax so that people can uh, have a good view of 3D screen. And another two technologies is a directional backlight and periodic uh, nanograting arrays. Um, for in a directional backlight, uh, usually they have a, a thin film that guides the light from two directions to uh, two perspective views. In all kinds of in all these uh, techniques, they use a uh, periodic uh, structures in front of a flat, a flat panel um, so that the light from the flat panel has a, a viewing angle, has a, a direction, and the um, views are uh, separated into several angles. However, when we move from one angle to another, then there is crosstalk and ghost image. So we think maybe there is another strategy. Maybe we can use uh, non-periodic nanostructures so that when the light comes out from the uh, flat panel or the display screen can converge to the eyes. In this way, the waveform can be sampled in a more accurate way and the uh, discretized uh, waveform of different views can be reconstructed more precisely. Uh, follow our uh, strategy, we designed a uh, vortex. In this vortex, we have different kinds of uh, nano gratings with uh, different period and different uh, orientation. Uh, it corresponding to the uh, waveform information. We know there are seven parameters in the wave, uh, of the of our waveform. However, uh, we need at least four parameters to reconstruct the light field. Here we use five parameters: x, y is the position, and period and orientation is the structural parameter of the nano grating. And then we designed, we based on the incident angle of the illumination, and we define the uh, viewing angle of all kinds of views so that we can uh, design and determine the spatial resolution and the orientation of each nano gratings. So uh, in the whole panel, uh, each pixels have a different uh, period and a different orientation. The period moves from uh, ranged from uh, 300 nanometer to more than one micron, and the orientation varies from full, uh, minus 77 degree to 77 degree. We test the concept by design a monochromatic 3D display um, with eight by eight views. And the experimental uh, images is uh, con uh, consistent with the simulated images. But we are not satisfied with uh, green color. Uh, in a display, it needs to be uh, a four color display. Um, as we all know, the nano gratings are wavefront sensitive. So we divided in the, the nano gratings from one nano grating to three nano gratings, each corresponding to a, a wavelength. And we use three different kinds of nano gratings to uh, coincident with the color filter placed in front of the uh, uh, display panel. So we have um, five parameters to tune with for the light field display. So we patent the nano gratings and we uh, imprint the nano gratings on a PET film so that it is flexible and the uh, uh, live view modulator can be uh, incorporated with a LCD panel purchased from the market. We, we, we put the uh, 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 live view modulator with the LCD panel pixel by pixel alignment. Um, the resolution of the LCD panel is 2K and the angular resolution is three degree and the resolution uh, and the viewing angle is 50 degree. And it doesn't need to be, to be uh, illuminated by a laser light. 
we illuminate it with a white LED light, it can present a, a four colors to the display. But there are some issues we need to uh, trigger uh, with, uh, before it can be used in our daily lives. There are several issues in 3D display. One of it is the visual fatigue. The visual fatigue is caused, uh, one of the main reasons is caused by the virgins and accommodation conflict. It is because in the real world, our eyes have two, uh, have several mechanisms to tell us the depth information of the uh, real objects. For example, for our single eye, uh, we have a crystal lens and the capsillary muscle will push and pull the uh, crystal lens so that the single eye is accommodate on the objects. So it is the focus distance of a single eye. But we have two eyes. When we stare at the object, our eyes will rotate and two eyes will converge to the uh, objects. In real world, the focus distance is coincident with the convergence distance. However, in 3D display screen, if single eye only capture uh, perspective images, then the single eye is focused at the distance of display screen. However, the virtual image is in front of or at the back of at the back of the display. So the convergence distance is not the same as focus distance. Our brain will be confused and it is the main, uh, one of the main reason for visual fatigue. In order for us to solve the visual fatigue, we need to use uh, to, to uh, have the mechanism to help the single eye to accommodate on the virtual uh, uh, object. As a result, we need to have more than uh, two views to be projected in a single eye. So in this situation, we need to design the, uh, the, the views so that the angular separation is smaller than the, uh, uh, the diameter of our pupil. And we use a camera. We use the camera to mimic the accommodation process of a single eye, and we use um, a view, live view modulator and the uh, different letters is projected in front of the live view modulator or at the back of the uh, uh, live view modulator, uh, showing the figures that um, the letters projected in front is at the same distance uh, of the head of the uh, uh, toy cow and the letters projected at the back of the a live view modulator is at the same distance as the tail of the cow. That is uh, letters projected in single color. Uh, in uh, in uh, four color, it has the same depth Q. And we only used 16 views to get the uh, depth Q for single eye. So the uh, image, uh, so uh, as a result, the it, uh, spatial resolution degradation is uh, elimin uh, it, it's not severe in this uh, situation. Another challenge for 3D display is the, uh, the, the challenge of large viewing angle. Um, large viewing angle with motion parallax. There are two issues that limit 3D display from large viewing angle. One limitation is the uh, it is caused by the live view uh, the live view modulator. The diffraction angle of the light beam uh, is exists uh, exceed the capability of geometric optics. Another issue for large viewing angle is the space bandwidth product is crit is critical. From the light beam diffraction point of view. Viewing angle for multi, uh, macro lens array, for example, is based on uh, the, this equation. So it is determined by the F number of each lens. 
If we want to get a viewing angle of 90 degree, the F number of each lens needs to be 0.5. And it becomes very hard to achieve for geometric optics. So to achieve large deflection angle of the emergent light, so the nanograting should be adopted in order to have a, a, a thin deflection at large angle. Another problem for a large viewing angle is the space bandwidth product. In an ideal 3D display, um, the spatial resolution needed for a large viewing angle needs to be at least 10 to 8. However, in the commercially available uh, display panel, for example, for uh, 32 inches, the highest resolution that we can uh, purchase from the market is 8K. It is corresponding to uh, 10 to 7. So the space bandwidth product is limited. So without uh, enough bandwidth product, how can we produce a 3D display with enough, uh, without enough information. There is one solution for this. Um, now, mo most of the 3D display have views equally distributed. That means the information is equally distrib distributed. Maybe we don't need to uh, distribute the information equally to each view. We can display the information depend on the application requirement. We can change the view distribution from, for example, four by four uh, equally uh, spaced in the, uh, uh, in the uh, viewing angle. We can change this for a variant information density. We can have a large high resolution. We, we can have higher resolution at the center of the screen and has a, a lower a resolution, but with extended viewing angle at the periphery. In this case, the views does not necessarily to be uh, lines or dots uh, sp evenly spaced in the uh, viewing window, but it has a hybrid uh, shape. It can be a hybrid shape as this uh, as dot lines and rectangular shape uh, uh, hybrid together. So we have proposed several view distributions. Um, in these four cases, the views are distributed um, unevenly uh, in the horizontal direction or in both directions. Then the question is, how can we realize the dot line and rectangular views hybrid together? Um, in the LCD panel, we can design uh, nanostructures and we use nanostructures to man manipulate the view distribution of, uh, uh, from each pixels. As a result, we can manipulate the view distribution at the center and at the periphery, and finally to reconstruct a 3D screen. For dot, it is easy to achieve. It can be realized by nano gratings. And for lines, it can be achieved by um, a, a, a little bit complicated structures like, like uh, shown here. We calculate this uh, phase hologram uh, by uh, GS algorithm, and as well as the rectangular uh, shape views can be realized as well. Then we used a homemade uh, system to fabricate these structures. In this uh, uh, architecture, we have a, a Fourier transform lens. In uh, between these two lenses, we insert a BOE. And this BOE element has a predefined uh, microstructures. Then the microstructures on the BOE um, uh, is collected. The, 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 light, the diffraction beam from the BOE is uh, collected by an objective lens. And finally, uh, all these diffracted brims, uh, beams uh, interfere with each other 
and the interfere patterns is recorded on a photoresist. In this system, we can adjust the pattern structures or the interference uh, infringes uh, patterns by rotating the uh, lens, the Fourier lens. Uh, we can move the Fourier lens uh, uh, backwards or uh, forward. Other, uh, in, in this case, the period of the pattern structures will be changed, or we can rotate the uh, actually rotate the lens. In this case, the orientation of the nano gratings will be rotated as well. In this uh, in this way, we patterned the two uh, D metal gratings on the view modulator. Uh, in this case, we patterned two thousand by uh, two thousand pixels. And in each pixel is uh, nano gratings, uh, is 2D nano gratings. And we proved the concept by uh, projecting different letters at different views. For example, for view one, it ranges from minus 80 degree to minus 40 degree. And uh, we have the, uh, the uh, nine views from ranged from minus 80 degree to 80 degree. The views are well separated from one to two to three to all the way to nine. This is the uh, video uh, showing the uh, letters at different viewing angle in front of the live view modulator. But it's uh, one color. We want to have a full color 3D display and we want it uh, to be a uh, uh, refreshable uh, so that we can see movies. So we use a LCD panel and in front of the LCD panel, we uh, incorporate it with a color filter and another uh, uh, view modulator is placed in front. These three elements are aligned pixel by pixel. And this is the structure, a photo of the view modulator. Um, uh, the structures in each pixel is different. And this is uh, in the red dashed uh, lines is the uh, is one voxel. And in the blue dashed lines is uh, one pixel. And inside of one pixel, there are RGB three uh, nano gratings corresponding to three uh, wavefronts. We you know, transfer the nano structures from a uh, photoresist to an uh, LED film. And we incorporate this LED film on in front of the uh, LCD panel. And finally, we have uh, a 3D uh, refreshable uh, 3D display. And the information is larger at the center and the information is, uh, uh, is lower at the periphery. This is a, a demo, a demonstration of a figure uh, from uh, with a viewing angle of a uh, hundred sixty degree. It has natural, it has natural um, uh, motion parallax, and there is no self-repeating views in this demonstration. There is another issue we need to. Uh, uh, tackle uh, because for 2D metal gratings, the light efficiency is not very high. For example, in uh, nano gratings, the theoretical limit for nano grating is, is about 80, uh, is about 40%. And in experiments, it's about 20% uh, diffraction efficiency. It's not enough uh, for us to use nano gratings uh, to incorporate it with our uh, daily life usage. So uh, we designed pixelated blazed gratings. The pixelated gratings has uh, multi-steps and uh, the diffraction efficiency can be improved. In this uh, demonstration, we used a four-step blazed gratings and the diffraction efficiency improved from 20% uh, in experiment to uh, sixty percent in experiment, but it's monochromatic display. 
So uh, we designed uh, intertwined flat lens for extended viewing distance and increased diffraction efficiency. In this, uh, in this design, we first designed a flat lens and uh, the flat lens works uh, at a broad bandwidth, broad wave wavelength bandwidth and the uh, focal depth is extended from one point to a large range. The depth of focus ranges from uh, 20 millimeter to 110 millimeter. Then we have this flat lens pixelated and we intertwined uh, different flat lens together to form the live view modulator. In this case, we have four views. So we integrated four flat lens and uh, integrate them together. And um, the light efficiency moves, uh, increased to 80% uh, benefit from uh, 200, more, more than 200 uh, steps. The crosstalk is below 28% from the viewing edge, uh, distance from uh, 24 centimeter to 90 centimeter. This is the distance that we feel comfortable to see a pad. Um, 24 centimeter is the near distance of our eye and 90 centimeter is the distance of our one arm. So in this uh, 3D display, we have three elements. Uh, one is directional backlight and the directional backlight shines on the LCD panel and then onto the view modulator covered with uh, uh, intertwined flat lens arrays. And this is the structure of the intertwined uh, lines uh, arrays. And um, this is the photo of the 3D display and different colors are uh, reconstructed uh, uh, in, uh, in a good consistent with uh, the original design. I want to emphasize the diffraction uh, challenges in 3D display. Uh, for example, uh, in this uh, architecture, we have a 3D display with uh, 32 inches. In this 32 inch screen, it is full covered with 300 nanometer nano gratings. Um, and the position accuracy needs to be 0 0.1 nanometer. If we scale up this uh, view modulator into a soccer field size, then it is equal to uh, use a uh, hair to cover the soccer field. And the position accuracy needs to be 0.3% of the hair. So the fabrication uh, challenges is still the limit that uh, hinders the further development of 3D display. To summarize my talk, there are several benefits to use uh, pixelated nano gratings uh, to modulate the light field uh, pixel by pixel rather than the field by field uh, strategy used in others' work. Um, the first uh, benefit to use pixelated nano gratings is the thin format. It is compatible with a flat panel and it is compatible with the electronic devices that we use daily. And uh, the pixelated nano gratings can be used to manipulate each views so that the crosstalk can be greatly reduced and the visual fatigue can be eliminated. Another advantage is the large angle deflection capability. Because of the large angle deflection capability, large viewing angle is realized. And the view shape can be tuned by 2D metal gratings. So we can manipulate the shape of views from dot to lines and to rectangular shape. As a result, variant uh, information density can be resolved and foveated 3D display can be realized. The last uh, 
advantage is the uh, profile engineering can be tuned in order to enhance the light e uh, efficiency uh, on each screen. So 3D display is the, uh, is the study to manipulate the light field, to reconstruct the light field by functional materials and devices. So uh, with that, I want to uh, thank my collaborators and my uh, students. And thank you for listening. Um, thank you, Professor Shell, for the excellent presentation on uh, 3D uh, display. Um, so now I think we can take questions from the audience. Um, I do see one question from the audience asking about um, how to achieve high efficiency uh, gradients on PET film? Are they normal length gradients? Uh, so for uh, metal gradients, uh, the efficiency is not high, uh, but for uh, uh, for flat lens, the efficiency can be high. Um, in in this structure, when we use in, in this structure, when we use um, uh, this kind of profile, and the uh, uh, the there are there are two hundred uh, fifty six steps in total, and um, the efficiency theoretically can be one hundred percent, and the experiment is about eighty percent of diffraction efficiency. In binary yeah. nanogratings, the diffraction efficiency is limited to about uh, 30 to 40 percent. Thank you, Professor Chow. I hope that uh, answers the question. Um, so is there any other questions from the audience? I think we're allowing them to just unmute and speak up, right, Jen? Yeah, um, so yeah, if you have a question, just unmute yourself and uh, feel free to ask. Yeah, they can, uh, you can either raise your hand so we can allow you to talk or you can post your questions in the Q&A box. I have a question first. So for the information density distribution problem, do we always have a denser information in one viewing angle or it can be multiple ones? Like is there usually just one Gaussian shape uh, distribution? Uh, so, um... The, the usually it is Gaussian distribution in each views. Uh, however, in nano gratings, the distribution can be changed from Gaussian distribution to uh, super Gaussian uh, distribution by manipulate the uh, by by uh, to by manipulating the views. Um, uh, and uh, in this case, crosstalk can be greatly reduced. Uh, when we um, change the view distribution from Gaussian to super Gaussian distribution. So uh, it is because the crosstalk is determined by the overlap between uh, views. And um, in order to minimize the crosstalk between views, um, super Gaussian distribution uh, can greatly help to reduce the overlap between views. Yeah, thank you for the, thank you for um, uh, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, thank you for your uh, excellent talk. I have a question about the Fresnel lens shown in this slide. Uh, I noticed that the thickness of the uh, of the structure is very is very large. It's very thick. So is this the same fabrication uh, process uh, with the um, meta greetings? Thanks. Oh, no, uh, thank you. It's not the same uh, fabrication technique. Mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, 2D meta greeting structure, we use uh, uh, multi-beam interference uh, lithography to do that. Uh, here in these slides with a thickness, with a height of five micron, uh, we, we use uh, laser direct writing technique to fabricate oh. 
these oh, structures. Yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, is this structure is patterned in the uh, photoresist, or uh, you have transferred an, onto uh, another uh, onto the um, another material? Usually, it's on photoresist first. Um, then the structures will be transferred to a, a PET film. Uh, it, it is because in a PET film, it is flexible. So uh, it can be incorporated with the LCD panel more easily because on photoresist, uh, if the patterns are on, on photoresist, it's on a glass substrate, then the glass substrate is rigid and uh, it, it can hardly be incorporated with the LCD uh, screen, uh, pixel by pixel. So we usually transfer it to to PET uh, uh, film, but it is still okay to use photoresist um, for a simple uh, prototype for, for a demonstration purpose. And mm -hmm. another uh, benefit for uh, transfer the, the st structures to a, a PET film is that it can be mass produced from one photoresist to multiple uh, PET copies. Thank you for your <clears throat> explanation. I'm also wondering about the um, efficiency of the of this uh, Fresnel lens. Uh, is this uh, better than the metal gratings? What kind of efficiency? The light efficiency or the fabrication uh, efficiency? Uh, the, the light efficiency. The uh, final light, the light efficiency. The efficiency of the flat lens is about uh, 80%. It's much uh, greater than the uh, 2D matter grating uh, structures. However, uh, the 2D matter gratings has a uh, much larger viewing angles. Oh, thanks. Uh, actually, so, I, I have also uh, tried this kind of uh, fabrication using uh, laser direct writing. And I have tried some blazed grating like yours. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to fabricate this uh, kind of uh, a greeting with um, laser direct writing, um, but not with the um, with the uh, sorry the holographic uh, lithography. Yeah, we used uh, laser direct writing to fabricate lot uh, all kinds of uh, blazed greetings. Um, uh, so uh, it, it is feasible to fabricate blazed greetings. <laughs> with uh, oh. laser direct writing. So you oh, purchased the uh, uh, instrument to fabricate it, or you built it, the, the uh, laser direct writing system? I use a, a commercial laser direct writing system. I, I, I'm just wondering, uh, do you have, uh, is uh, uh, compared with the holographic system, is the uh, direct laser writing, uh, direct laser writing, um, have a better, uh, uh, have a better performance? Uh, I don't think they are, con uh, they are the same. I don't think they are the same because they are not the same technique. So uh, yeah. I don't usually compare them together. Actually, uh, sometimes we choose laser direct writing. For example, in this work, we use um, laser direct writing because uh, we need multiple steps and the height oh, yes. is five micron is not achievable by um, the, 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 uh, the spatial, uh, spatial uh, frequency variable interference system is not achievable by, by that system. However, uh, that system can achieve some unique features that cannot be realized by this laser direct writing system. So there are two systems with different fabrication capabilities. Uh, yeah, I got it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you question. I have a one more question. So. For the uh, for the last part uh, uh, about the fabrication of the gratings, uh, why exactly it, um, 
it's an uh, alignment uh, issue. Like why, why do we need to align the gratings with an accuracy of 0.1 uh, nanometer? And also like uh, what exactly it is aligned to? Like, uh, is it, uh, are the gratings aligned to another layer of, of gratings or light source uh, or some other parts? Thank you for your question. So in these slides, uh, because these views are spaced uh, sparsely in the viewing this the in the viewing window uh, in the observation window, so we don't want the light. For example, here we want the light emit from this point have uh, uh, we want to manipulate the emergent light uh, from the uh, virtual image to different views. So the manipulation accuracy is calculated by the distance between one view to another. If the uh, angular separation between two views is 0 0.7 degree, then the tuning accuracy of the nano gratings needs to be 0 0.1 nanometer. So oh. it is uh, because the, the when we uh, vary the uh, period of nano gratings, we actually uh, change the direction of, of this light, right? When, when we change the nano gratings, then the direction of this light will be uh, changed. So actually, when there are two pixels on the screen, uh, have a angular separation of 0 0.7 degree, then it is corresponding to about a one nanometer difference between these two adjacent um, uh, pixels. That's why the period of the nano gratings needs to be manipulated correctly. Otherwise, the views will be merged to each other, fuses with each other. Oh, so the accuracy of 0.1 nanometer is a periodicity of the grating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, I see that. Arjun, you want to go next? Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Professor Chow, for a nice talk. And it's actually my first time to, you know, uh, have a look at the research on like a 3D display. So I have just some very simple questions. Like the first is like, maybe I missed in your talk. Um, usually what's the size and the size of display of your device? Uh, and also I have another question is, um, uh, because I can see that for some monochrome uh, display, it is usually very clear. Uh, but I, uh, I saw like there's like a, a full color hat moving around this kind of video, but I noticed that there are some blur in that uh, full color display. So is that always the case or maybe there are something um, going on with the full color one? So it usually, I mean, at least from what I see from the video, I mean, maybe it's because the video quality, it looks a little bit blurred to me. Yeah, but the, mo the monochrome looks very clear, crystal clear, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just curious, yeah. like, uh, this is always the case or, yeah. Uh, the, the display screen varies. The, uh, so in, in, in this work, the display is, Eight, uh, is six inches. And in some display, we use uh, 32 inches. So in most of our studies, the uh, display uh, size is from uh, five inches to uh, 32 inches. Okay, I see. For the uh, display, um, so it's not from, uh, for, for, we, uh, for full color, 3D display, um, the resolution is always criticized. Um, in, in 3D display, the resolution is always criticized because people um, think that in 3D display, we are compare the performance, display performance with 2D display. However, in uh, 2D display, actually we have all the information displaced uh, uniformly in all angles, but in 3D display, we, want, we need to divide 
the information to different angles. As a result, the information will be divided into uh, several parts, se se several uh, uh, allocate the information into different angles. As a result, the information will be reduced when we observe it from each angle. So um, the, uh, this, the image degradation is criticized for 3D display. However, I don't think it is fair because since we want to put more information in the uh, depths, it is, of course, the information will be reduced in 2D space. However, when we improve the, the, the industry uh, uh, improves, we will have information, uh, uh, more information than we require by our retina. Uh, when, they, uh, when, when the information provided is more than we wanted into the a screen, then we can have a clear image at 3D display. So 3D display is the next generation display technology. So uh, without information, I don't think it is uh, able to have 3D display in our uh, daily life, nice. except some uh, cases that we used um, uh, when we, uh, in, in some special cases, for example, in medical care or some other uh, places that uh, the depth information uh, cannot be ignored. Nice. And uh, the information uh, and the uh, blurry effect uh, can be uh, further improved by pre-calibration of the image. Um, uh, and I think that this is one of the work that we, we want to uh, we want to do in, 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 the, net, in the future. Okay, thanks so much, Professor Xiao. Um, thank you, Professor Xiao. Um, so if there's no question from the audience, I think myself have a very short question. Um, so uh, first, thank you for the excellent talk. I, I've always been interested in uh, the uh, AR technology and the 3D things. Um, and in fact, I think it was almost 10 years ago uh, when I was uh, playing with the uh, like a video game console called the Nintendo 3DS, where they have a 3D display um, ready. And I think one big problem is when you are playing with the uh, display for a long time, you get the dizziness and uh, uh, it's very uncomfortable to play with. Um, I'm not uh, I'm not sure if uh, this is the same issue with the uh, as the vision fatigue that you were talking about, or is it something else? And uh, is it if not, is it is a still issue for the 3D displays that uh, you are developing? There are several reasons for uh, visual fatigue. Uh, one reason for visual fatigue is uh, the the uh, uh, the one I mentioned uh, here is the virgins and accommodation conflict. It creates a uh, it creates visual fatigue. Another problem uh, caused the visual fatigue is the uh, crosstalk. Um, these two issues can be uh, solved nowadays uh, by a uh, more precise reconstruction of light field. And there are other visual fatigue uh, caused uh, by the motion conflict. Um, for example, when we look at um, a moving uh, screen, um, and however, our body is stayed still. In this case, the motion uh, we received from our eye is in conflict with our body, and this will give us another uh, visual fatigue. And this visual fatigue cannot be solved recently. However, all uh, the visual fatigue related with our eyes, I think it is solvable by 3D display, and we are still in the progress of solving all these problems. Uh, okay, so basically the image is moving and your brain thinks you are moving, but your body is actually not moving. That's uh, causing the visual fatigue. Yeah, yeah that, that is one of the reasons for visual okay. fatigue. Your, 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 your eyes feel that you are moving. However, your body is not moving. 
that is one of the problem for visual fatigue. And here is one eye feels that the object is at this distance, two eyes feels the object is another distance. This is another reason for visual fatigue. So I, I think our, our body is very, is very clever. If the sense uh, perceived from one eye or two eye, from this channel or from that channel is conflict with each other, it will send a signal to our body that you are in a danger situation. <laughs> so, so I think that is why we have the, the visual fatigue problem. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, so um, I think, yeah, if there's no more questions from the audience, I'd like to again, thank you. Professor Chow for the excellent talk and uh, thanks everyone for joining us tonight and uh, uh, this morning. Um, so yeah, I hope you have a great weekend and hope you enjoyed this talk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for listening. See you. Okay, see you. See you. See you.